Welcome back. Let's practice working with surfaces of revolution in 3D space. All right, so here's our first example. We want to sketch a graph and find an equation for the surface of revolution formed by revolving the curve z equals y squared in the yz plane about the z axis. Okay, so to solve this problem, we need to remember the general form of an equation for a surface of revolution in 3D space. And it depends on the axis of revolution, but it looks like this. When you're generating curve, or the curve forming your surface of revolution is revolving around the x-axis, your equation will be y squared plus z squared equal to the radius function in terms of x squared. Or in other words, you're generating curve in terms of x squared. So if you're revolving around the x-axis, your radius function will be in terms of x, and it will be equal to the sum of the other two variables squared. Now, if your curve is revolving around the y-axis, then your radius function needs to be in terms of y, and so you would square that radius function, and it would be equal to the sum of the other two variables squared. And finally, if you're revolving around the z-axis, you want your radius function or generating curve to be in terms of z, so r of z, and that squared is equal to the sum of the other two variables squared. All right, and just like I said when going through each of these equations, remember that r of x, r of y, and r of z are the radius functions or the generating curves for the surface of revolution that we are working with. Okay, so in our example, if we are revolving around the z axis, that would be this axis right here. Let me make a note of that. We are revolving around the z axis. What that tells us is we want our radius function or our generating curve to be in terms of z we want some other variable equal to an expression of z. And the curve that we've been given is z equals y squared in the yz plane, which is the plane formed by the z-axis and the y-axis. So what we have here is not an equation that is in terms of z per se. What we need to do is solve for the other variable. Okay, so what I'm saying here is we want to solve for y, and then we will have an expression in terms of z for this curve. So if we do that, we just need to take the square root of both sides of the equation. Doing that will give us y equals the square root of z. And so that would be our radius function, r of z, for this surface of revolution. So if we want to find an equation for this surface of revolution formed by revolving this curve around the z-axis, we need to remember that in general form for when we are revolving around the z-axis. And that form is that the sum of the other two variables squared will be equal to that radius function squared that is in terms of z. So since we're working in terms of z, that means we will have x squared plus y squared equals that radius function in terms of z squared, right? So we'd have r of z squared. But now we know what r of z is. It's equal to the square root of z. So we can plug that in and we'd have x squared plus y squared equals the square root of z squared and the square root of z squared is just z, right? The square and the square root cancel each other out. So we have x squared plus y squared equals z. That is the equation that would represent the surface of revolution formed by revolving this curve around the z axis. Okay, so that takes part of half of this problem. We did want to find an equation for the surface of revolution, but we also want to sketch a graph of it. And if you know your special surfaces well from the last couple lessons, you might actually recognize the type of surface that this equation represents. It actually lines up really nicely with one of our quadric surfaces. This equation right here represents an elliptic paraboloid, right? When you're working with an equation with three variables, two of them are squared and positive, and one of the variables is only of degree one, then what you have is an elliptic paraboloid directed along the axis of the variable that is to the first power. Okay, so technically what we have here is an elliptic paraboloid. But if you didn't recognize that, that's fine. You could still find the same surface by drawing the generating curve and then revolving it around the z-axis, which is what I'm going to show you here. All right, our generating curve is z equals y squared. But we solved for y, so we had y equals the square root of z. Really, that's just going to give you half of this full parabola. All right, so z equals y squared. That would look something like this, right? If you think of the yz plane as being the xy plane from two dimensions, right? If we had the x-axis and the y-axis in two dimensions, and this was y equals x squared, we would have a parabola like that, right? That would be y equals 
x squared. It's essentially the same thing here, except instead of y equals x squared, we have z equals y squared, okay? Y and z are both the vertical axes in those two planes, and so we know that the parabola in each case will be pointed in the direction of that positive axis for that variable. Okay, so in case you were wondering how I knew how to draw that graph, that's sort of my line of thinking. But now our actual generating curve is only going to be half of that, right? We're looking at y equals the square root of z. So that would just be the portion of this parabola that is in the positive y direction, okay? So really, if you wanted to, you could erase this half of the curve, and this is really our generating curve, y equals the square root of z. But then what we're going to be doing is revolving it around the z-axis, which will create circular traces or circular cross sections and ultimately form our surface of revolution, which will turn out to be an elliptic paraboloid. All right, so if I draw some of those circles here, you can then connect the circles like this. And then if you shade it in, that would be our surface of revolution or elliptic paraboloid. All right, and so if you wanna see what it would look like in 3D space, I'll put a 3D render up here on the screen for you to look at. But with that, that is it for this example. So let's take a look at another one. Next up, we wanna sketch a graph and find an equation for the surface of revolution formed by revolving the curve 2z equals the square root of four minus x squared in the xz plane about the x axis. Okay, so let's start with the equation once again. We will wait to sketch the graph of the surface of revolution till the end. Let's just start by finding the equation of the surface of revolution. And the first thing you always wanna be on the lookout for is what axis are we revolving around? In this case, the curve is being revolved around the x-axis. So label that. I'm gonna to go to the x-axis here and indicate that that is the axis that we are revolving around. Now, since we know that we are revolving around the x-axis, what that means is that for our equation for the surface of revolution, our radius function or our generating curve needs to be in terms of x, all right? And so then in our equation, the two variables that we square and take their sum will be the other two variables. So if we're revolving around the x-axis, then that means that our equation will be in this form. We will have y squared plus z squared equals our radius function in terms of x squared. Okay, so we knew that we were revolving around the x-axis, so our radius function must be in terms of x, so the other two terms have to involve the other two variables, y and z. But now we need to find r of x. What is our radius function in terms of x? Well, we need to go back to our curve here and solve for the other variable, all right? So we have 2z equals the square root of four minus x squared. From this curve, we can get our radius function, but we need to make sure that we completely solve for the other variable, in this case, z. And so that's pretty easy in this case. We just need to divide both sides by two. So if we do that, we'll find z equals the square root of four minus x squared divided by two. So that's going to be equal to our radius in terms of x. All right, so to get the equation of this surface of revolution, we just need to plug that radius in terms of x into this equation right here. So if we do that, we'll have y squared plus z squared equals the square root of four minus x squared divided by two, and that whole thing is squared. Now, if you square a square root, they just sort of cancel each other out. So we're gonna have four minus x squared in the numerator, and then in the denominator, if you square two, you get four. So our final equation here is y squared plus z squared equals four minus x squared divided by four. Now, you could leave it in this form, but I think we could get it into a little bit of a nicer form if we multiply both sides by four and then try to get all of our variable terms on one side of the equation. You don't always have to do this, but since I notice that all three variables are squared, it's most likely the case that we have some type of quadric surface here, and that'll help us check our work when we go to sketch our surface of revolution to see that we sketched it properly. So I'm gonna keep going here. I'm gonna multiply both sides by four, and that will give us four y squared plus four z squared equals four minus x squared. And then if I add x squared to both sides of the equation, we'll have x squared plus four y squared plus four z squared equals four. And now at this point, we can already tell that we're working with an ellipsoid. If you remember from a previous lesson when we talked about quadric surfaces, when you have an equation where all three variables are squared and their terms are all positive and you have a constant, 
which would be that four right here, you are working with the equation of an ellipsoid in 3D space. In fact, we can get it into standard form if we just divide both sides by four, then that constant will become one, which is what you want for the standard equation of an ellipsoid. So if I do that here, we will get x squared divided by four plus y squared plus z squared equals one, right? If you divide four y squared by four, that four is gone, you just have y squared. And the same thing with four z squared, it just becomes z squared. So that's going to be my final answer here. This is the equation that would represent our surface of revolution, which also happens to be the equation of an ellipsoid. So I'll write that down. This is an ellipsoid. And so let's move on to the second part of this problem, which is to sketch a graph of this surface of revolution. Now, typically the way I would go about this is like what we did in the last example, where we graphed the generating curve and then imagine revolving it around the axis of revolution by drawing traces of circles from that curve around the axis. But in this case, our generating curve is kind of ugly. It's the square root of four minus x squared divided by two. We could certainly figure out what that is by plotting some points. But I think an easier way to go about this is to just use the fact that we know that we are working with an ellipsoid and just sketch a graph of the ellipsoid using what we know about ellipsoids. All right, it's essentially just an ellipse in three dimensions. It's going to have traces that are either ellipses or circles. And the way we determine where those circles and ellipses cross each of the three axes is by looking at the denominator of each of the terms in the equation. You just take the square root of the denominator of each term. So for x squared, the square root of four is plus or minus two. So the x-intercepts would be plus or minus two. And then for y squared and z squared, their denominators are one. So the intercepts for the y and z axes would be plus or minus one, okay? Because that's the square root of one. All right, I'll just write it down here. For our ellipse, we have x equals plus or minus two, y equals plus or minus one, and z equals plus or minus one as well. All right, so I'm going to label those on our 3D coordinate system here. Now to sketch a graph of this ellipsoid, we just need to draw the traces in each coordinate plane by connecting the appropriate intercepts. All right, so let's start with the x, y plane. We wanna connect the x and y intercepts. So I'll start at the positive x, go to the positive y, then back to the negative x, back to the negative y, and then to the positive x again. Now let's draw our trace in the y, z plane by connecting the y and z intercepts. So we'll start at the positive z, go to the positive y, to the negative z, to the negative y, back to the positive z. All right, and you can see that that trace is in fact a circle. The radius all the way around is one. So that's good. That means that what we know about our surface of revolution here is still intact, even though we have an ellipsoid, the traces along the axis of revolution, in this case, the x-axis, we still have circles. So that checks out. All right, now finally, we still need to draw one more trace and that would be for the x, z plane. So we need to connect the x and z intercepts. So we'll start at the positive z, go to the positive x, come back through to the negative z, and then to the negative x, and then back to the positive z. All right, so those are our traces, but just to make it look a little bit nicer, I'm going to round off some of the edges. I'm gonna draw some extra lines. So we'll have one right here and then one down here just to make things look a little bit nicer. Now you can sort of see a better picture of this ellipse, and it will look even better if I shade it in. There we go, that's our surface of revolution, or our ellipsoid for this problem. Now, even though we took a little bit of a shortcut to draw it, since we knew it was an ellipsoid, we just sketched an ellipsoid because that's an easy quadric surface to sketch. I still wanna make a note of where our generating curve would be. We can kind of tell now from the shape of our surface of revolution, that our generating curve is most likely half of an ellipsoid, which would make sense here. If you were to square both sides of this equation that we started with, you'd have four z squared, and that would be equal to four minus x squared. If you then manipulated it a little bit more, you would find that that equation would turn out to be the equation of an ellipse. But since we're looking at the positive square root of four minus x squared divided by two, we know we're only looking at half of that ellipsoid, particularly the positive half or the half in the positive x z plane. So really our generating curve would be half of the ellipsoid trace that we drew in the x z plane, particularly from the positive x intercept to the positive z intercept to the negative x intercept. So that would be this curve right here. Okay, that is our generating curve that when revolved around the X axis will form the surface of revolution here, or really it will form this ellipsoid. 
Okay, and once again, here's a 3D render of what this surface of revolution looks like in 3D space. Hopefully you're not surprised by this one. I think by this point you know what an ellipsoid looks like, but regardless, I wanted to show you the 3D render anyway. But with that, that is it for this example, so let's move on to the next one. For this example, we once again want to sketch a graph and find an equation for the surface of revolution formed by revolving the curve y equals a natural log of z in the yz plane about the y axis. Okay, so just like with our previous two examples, the first thing I want to do here is focus on finding the equation of the surface of revolution, and then we'll worry about sketching it. And what we need to determine is what is our axis of revolution? Well, it's very clearly stated for us, we are revolving about the y axis. So because we're revolving about the y axis, and by the way, I'm going to make a note of that, you want to draw an arrow around the y axis so you don't forget which axis is your axis of revolution. But now that we know that, we also know that our radius function, or our generating curve, needs to be in terms of y. So looking at our given curve here, is it currently in terms of y? Or in other words, are we solved for another variable that gives us an expression of y? Well, not quite. We have y equals a natural log of z, but what we really want here is z equal to some expression in terms of y. Okay, so in other words, we need to solve for z here, which is not a problem. We can do that pretty easily. To solve for z, we need to get rid of the natural log function around it, which we can do by using the exponential function e, because e and the natural log are inverse functions. All right, so we need to exponentiate each side of the equation, which will give us e to the power of y is equal to e to the power of the natural log of z, but now e and the natural log cancel out, so what you're left with is z equals e to the power of y. That is our radius function in terms of y. That is our generating curve, okay? And so since we know that our radius function or generating curve is in terms of y, then that means for our equation of this surface of revolution, the other two terms will involve x and z. Right, so we'll have x squared plus z squared equals our radius in terms of y squared. All right, you don't wanna have y over here. You wanna have the other two variables equal to that radius function in terms of y squared. And so to finalize our equation, we just need to plug in our radius function in terms of y. So if we do that, we'll have x squared plus z squared equals e to the power of y squared. Now to simplify this, do not square y, all right, do not write e to the power of y squared. That would be wrong. Remember that you need to multiply exponents when you have a value raised to an exponent. So our final equation here is x squared plus z squared equals e to the power of 2y, all right? Once again, do not write y squared. You want to write 2y. Multiply the exponents and this is what you get, okay? And that's our final answer. That is the equation for the surface of revolution. Unfortunately for us, and unlike the last two examples, this is not an equation that is in a form that we recognize, right? This is not representative of any of our quadric surfaces, so we're not going to get any help here with sketching this surface. We have to graph our generating curve and then revolve it around the y-axis, all right? So our generating curve here is z equals e to the power of y, and so if you remember what the graph of the exponential function e looks like, it's sort of something like this. If we're looking at the xy plane, so this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis, if we were looking at y equals e to the power of x, this is what the graph looks like. It's an exponential curve that crosses through at y equals 1. So we essentially have the same thing here, except instead of a vertical y-axis, we have a vertical z-axis. And instead of a horizontal x-axis, we have a horizontal y-axis. So everything sort of matches up. Instead of y equals e to the power of x, we have z equals e to the power of y. So that means we're going to have this same shaped curve in the yz plane, the way that we have it set up. Okay, so that's how I'm going to sketch the curve here. We'll just draw an exponential curve like this. That will be our radius function, or our generating curve. I will note that it does cross through z equals 1. But now that we have that curve sketched, what we want to do is revolve it around the y-axis to form our surface of revolution, which we can represent by drawing some circular traces around that axis of revolution. Just remember to keep the radius of each circle the same. In other words, the distance from the axis of revolution to the curve, you want to make sure that's the same on both sides of that axis of revolution. 
So I'll draw some circles like this to represent our surface of revolution that would be formed as we revolve this curve around the y-axis. All right, you should get something like that. And then you can connect those circles to finish off the shape of the surface of revolution. And it might also help to shade it in, which I'll do right now. And there we go. That is our surface of revolution. I'll put a 3D render up on the screen right now so you can actually see what it looks like in 3D space. But that's the surface of revolution that would be formed by revolving y equals a natural log of z about the y-axis. All right, let's move on to the next example. Hey there, real quick, before we take a look at the next example, if you find my tutorial videos here at JK Math to be helpful, then I'd invite you to join my membership site, JK Math Plus, where you get access to many perks, including bonus content and my exclusive community. The bonus content includes dark mode versions of my videos, extra example problems, and more, while the community is a private space online where you can post questions, have discussions, and study together with me and other members. To learn how to join and see a full list of everything you'd get access to as a member, you can head over to jkmathematics.com plus. I will have a link for that in the description of this video. Okay, so if you're interested in becoming a member, feel free to check that out. It's a great way to support me and the tutorials I make, as well as a great way for you to learn math better. But for now, let's take a look at the next example. All right, so we're switching things up here for the last three examples. Let's read our new instructions here. We wanna find a generating curve and the axis of revolution for the surface represented by this given equation. Okay, so this is exactly the opposite of what we were just doing, right? In the previous three examples, we were given a generating curve and the axis that that curve is revolving around, and we wanted to find an equation for the surface of revolution formed by that generating curve around that axis of revolution. But now we're starting with the equation of the surface of revolution, and we want to determine what the generating curve and axis of revolution is. So we have to reverse the process of what we were doing in the previous examples. And now you'll notice that for these three examples, these problems don't say to sketch the surface of revolution. But despite that, I'm still going to draw a sketch for you. I want you to see what these surfaces of revolution look like. But most likely, if you were asked a question like this, you probably wouldn't have to sketch the surface yourself. But in case you do have to, you'll at least get to see me do it in these examples. Okay, but before we can do that, how are we going to determine a generating curve and axis of revolution for the surface of revolution represented by this equation? What we need to do is sort of analyze the form of our equation. Does it look like any of the three forms that we can have for a surface of revolution in 3D space? Do we have x squared plus y squared equals a radius in terms of z squared? Do we have y squared plus z squared equals a radius in terms of x squared? Or if you look at our equation here, do we have x squared plus z squared equals some radius in terms of y squared? The answer is yes. That's exactly what we have right here. That is the form of this equation. What we have is essentially x squared plus z squared equals our radius in terms of y squared, okay? We have a function in terms of y, it's squared, and even if it wasn't, we could just take the square root of it and say that that's the expression being squared. You'll see that later on in this video. But regardless, that is the form that we have. And so what does this tell us about this surface of revolution? Well, it tells us that the square root of this right here, whatever x squared plus z squared is equal to, the square root of that is the generating curve for this surface of revolution. So the square root of cosine squared y is just cosine y. So from this, we clearly know that r of y is equal to cosine y, but now we need to express that with another variable. Preferably, you wanna write another variable equal to that function, and you could pick either one. It doesn't matter. You could pick x or z. They would both be right answers. What I mean by that is that our generating curve could either be x equals cosine y or z equals cosine y. Both of those curves would be generating curves for the surface of revolution. I talk about this in greater detail in my lesson video for this topic. So if you haven't seen that, feel free to go back and watch the lesson video. But it is true that a surface of revolution doesn't just have one generating curve. They're not unique. There are multiple different curves that can generate a particular surface of revolution. Okay, so both of these answers are correct. Whatever your radius function is, just set it equal to either of the other two variables that your radius function is not in terms of. 
Okay, so those are generating curves for the surface of revolution. But what about the axis of revolution? Which axis are we revolving around? Well, it's all based on what variable your generating curve is in terms of. In this case, it's in terms of y, so we are revolving around the y axis. Okay, so that's the other part of this answer. We are revolving around the y axis. So that's the other answer to this problem. But now finally, let's actually sketch a picture of this surface of revolution. We know we're revolving around the y axis, and one of our generating curves is z equals cosine of y. We can graph that pretty easily in the yz plane. If this is z equals one, and this is z equals negative one, and then we have y equals pi divided by two, y equals pi, y equals three pi divided by two, and y equals two pi. And I guess I'll label it in the other direction as well. The graph of z equals cosine y would look something like this. And then if I go in the other direction, right, you have this wave that represents the cosine function. And so if you were to revolve that around the y axis, a very interesting surface is going to be formed. If I draw some circular cross sections, we'll get something like this. But remember, the whole entire curve is revolving around the y axis. So you are going to have circles all the way across. Okay, so there's all my circular cross sections. Now I am going to connect the circles to finish off the shape of the surface here. You do want to do this, but remember where the original curve was. There we go, something like that. And now if I shade it in, the actual surface almost looks like a chain of weirdly shaped balls. I don't really know any other way to describe it. It's kind of an odd shape. In fact, here's the 3D render of it. You can really get a good idea of what this surface of revolution looks like. It's pretty cool. This definitely looks nothing like any of our other special types of surfaces, but those are the kinds of cool surfaces we can create by revolving a generating curve around an axis in the three-dimensional coordinate system. And by the way, you can sort of tell now that while we did use z equals cosine y as our generating curve, that's the curve that I drew, if you were to use the other generating curve, x equals cosine of y, you would get the same exact surface of revolution. Okay, if you drew the graph of cosine in the xy plane, you would get a very similar curve in the xy plane that when revolved around the y axis would create the same exact surface. Okay, I just chose to use z equals cosine y because it's easier to draw a graph in the yz plane than it is in the xy plane with the way we have to set up our 3D coordinate system. Let's take a look at another example. Next up, we want to find a generating curve and the axis of revolution for the surface represented by this equation. We have y squared plus z squared minus 3x equals 0. And so we want to follow a very similar process to what we did for the last example. We are reversing the process of what we did in the first couple examples where we were actually finding the equation of a surface of revolution, but now we're doing the opposite. We already have the equation and we want to find the generating curve and axis of revolution. So looking at this equation, does it look like it's in the form of any of our equations for surfaces of revolution? Well, it's pretty close, right? We have two squared variables with the same coefficient. That's typically what you want to look for. We have one y squared plus one z squared. And then there's sort of this oddball term of negative three x. Since that's the odd one out, I'm going to put that on the other side of the equation. I'm going to add three x to both sides. And what we'll get is y squared plus z squared equals three x. And now all of a sudden, you can very clearly see that this equation is in the form of a surface of revolution. Specifically, it's in the form y squared plus z squared equals some radius in terms of x squared, all right? Even though it doesn't look like we have a squared term here, right, it's just 3x, that doesn't matter. We can take the square root of it, and that function being squared will be r of x, okay? So in this case, this is what we have. y squared plus z squared equals the square root of 3x squared, right? If you square the square root of something, you just get that something back. And so we can see clearly by comparing this equation to this equation that r of x, our radius or generating curve in terms of x, must be the square root of 3x. All right, so we know r of x is equal to the square root of 3x, but to actually write our answer here for the generating curve, we want to set the square root of 3x equal to either y or z. And I'll do both because both answers are valid. 
So you could have two answers here, y equals the square root of 3x, or z equals the square root of 3x. Both of those curves would be generating curves for this surface of revolution. And then furthermore, we know that the axis of revolution for this surface of revolution must be the x-axis because our radius function is in terms of x. All right, so that's pretty clear. Our other answer is that we are revolving around the x-axis, okay? And I'll box that in. That is the other half of our answer here. Now, you don't have to graph this if you don't want to. I'm going to draw a sketch of this surface of revolution. If we use the generating curve y equals the square root of 3x, that's essentially just the curve y equals the square root of x, but stretched a little bit. So you could draw that curve pretty easily in the xy plane here. Just remember that this is the positive y axis and this is the positive x axis. So our curve would be pointing in the positive x direction, right? If you were to look at a flat xy plane, so this is y and this is x, that curve would look something like this but we need to draw that in this xy plane. So we would start at the origin and point in this way towards the positive x direction, right? We're still pointing in the positive x direction. It's just that the plane is drawn a little bit differently in the 3D coordinate system. All right, so this would be our curve and that is going to be revolved around the x axis. So let me label that here. That's the axis of revolution. So if I draw some circular traces here of revolving this curve around the axis, we should get something like that, and I'll connect those circles. Not a perfect sketch, but once again, we do have an elliptic paraboloid, right? This is very similar to our first example. If you look at the equation right here, we have two squared variable terms, both are positive, and one variable term that is to the first power. So that is very clearly the equation of an elliptic paraboloid, which is one of our quadric surfaces. Okay, so I will write that down. It's just good to know that and good to try to recognize those types of surfaces when you see them. All right, but that is it for this example. Let's move on to the last example for this video. Okay, so for our last example, we have the same directions, but with a different equation. We want to find a generating curve and the axis of revolution for the surface represented by this equation. We have 9x squared plus 9y squared minus z to the fourth power equals zero. Okay, so just like with our previous two examples, what we wanna do is try to see how this equation that we've been given could be manipulated into the form of one of the three forms we can have for an equation for a surface of revolution. And typically what you wanna look for is two variables that are both squared and have the same coefficient. And in this case, what jumps out to me is that we have 9x squared and 9y squared, two variables that are being squared and they have the same coefficient. This other term here is sort of the odd man out. We have z to the power of four. That doesn't really match the form of these other two terms. So I think we're good to move that term to the other side of the equation. And then we're pretty much in the form of an equation for a surface of revolution. All right, so if we add z to the fourth power to both sides of the equation, we'll have nine x squared plus nine y squared equals z to the fourth power. But we're not quite in the form yet, right? we almost have a form that looks like a surface of revolution. What we probably want here, since we have x squared and y squared on this side, and then an expression in terms of z on the other side, what we probably wanna get is x squared plus y squared equals some radius in terms of z squared. But we don't quite have that. What we need to do is divide both sides by nine, okay? If we do that, we'll get x squared plus y squared equals z to the fourth power divided by nine. And now we can clearly see that our equation is in this form. We have x squared plus y squared equal to some radius function in terms of z squared. Okay, so to find that radius function, we need to take the square root of that term. And so this is what we would have, x squared plus y squared equals z squared divided by three squared, right? If you square z squared, you get z to the fourth power. If you square three, you get nine. So r of z, our radius function in terms of z, or our generating curve would be z squared divided by three, okay? So we know that r of z is equal to z squared divided by three, but we could represent the actual curve two different ways. We could either say x equals z squared divided by three, or y equals z squared divided by three, all right? Those would both be correct answers for a generating curve of this surface of revolution.
all right? Whatever the variable is for your generating curve, in this case it's z, you can set that expression equal to the other two variables to find a generating curve. So that would be x equals z squared divided by three or y equals z squared divided by three. Just don't set it equal to z and you're fine, all right? But since we know that our radius function or our generating curve is in terms of z, we know that we are revolving around the z-axis. All right, so that's the other answer to this problem. We know that we are revolving around the z-axis, okay? So that's the other answer. Now, what I wanna do before we close things out here is draw a sketch of this surface of revolution. For our generating curve, we have two different curves to choose from. We can either do y equals z squared divided by three or x equals z squared divided by three. I'm gonna go with the y equation since that means we'll be working in the yz plane and that's the nice plane right here that we can treat very similarly to how we work with an x, y plane in two dimensions. And so y equals z squared divided by three would be a parabola, right? Whenever you have a degree one variable equal to a degree two variable and it's multiplied by some constant, in this case, that would be one third. What you have is a basic parabola. Dividing it by three or multiplying by one third essentially just stretches that parabola. And the variable that's equal to the squared term in this case y, that would tell you the axis that the parabola is directed along. And in this case, since we have a positive z squared divided by three, that means our parabola will be pointed in the positive y direction. All right, so the parabola here in the yz plane would look something like this. You could also draw it for x equals z squared divided by three. That would just be a parabola in the xz plane pointing in the positive x direction. Okay, but if we revolve this parabola around the z-axis, here's the surface of revolution we will get. You wanna draw some circular cross sections around the z-axis, sort of like this, and you'll get a very interesting surface. It'll look something like this, and I'll draw some more down here yet. You wanna make sure to take the entire curve into account. And so if you do, you should get something like this. And then if you connect the circles on the other side, you should get a surface that looks like this. All right, and then I'll shade it in. You should get sort of this cool hourglass shape, but once again, it's a little bit easier to see what these surfaces look like with a 3D render. So here is one. Hopefully this gives you a better picture of this surface of revolution that we're working with. Once again, it doesn't matter which generating curve you use, whether it's the x equals equation or it's the y equals equation, you will get the same surface of revolution when you revolve those curves around the z-axis. Okay, but with that, this was the last example for this video. However, I do have one more example available on my membership site. So if that's something that interests you, feel free to look into becoming a member. You can find all the details about the membership at jkmathematics.com plus. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, then this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.